click, click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm coming to you here from inside my studio again. And I'm doing a, it's about been a month since my last uh, Q&A or what did I call it last time? My quick binge review question something, blah, 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 blah. So whatever I called it, I'm doing it again. So I'm gonna answer a lot of the questions that I've been getting either on Instagram, Twitter, or my YouTube channel, as well as my blog and questions from other uh, article, I write for other magazines and so I get different questions. I don't have a chance to answer all of them so I'm going to try to answer them here now quickly. And one of them uh, is my most recent question which was, uh, and it was more of a question slash statement and I think he was doing it playfully. He was doing it playfully. He said, he said that my click clicks irritate him. Why, why can't I let him hear the actual sound of the shutter? So good point. I too like the sound of certain shutters. And the reason why I started off doing click click was because uh, a lot of my cameras I was reviewing were leaf shutter cameras, my Ricoh GR, uh, X100, the, the Fuji films, and you couldn't hear the shutter. And so I had to like mimic the sound of a click click. So I had to say click click. And it was a cue for camera girl to let me know, you know, for me to let her know that I've started. So it was kind of a, a cue and then it became a thing. I don't know why it became a thing, but it became my thing. And uh, I'm using this film camera as another reason why I do it, because I don't want to waste actual film. So imagine I do two clicks at the beginning, two clicks at the end, so that's four shots wasted on my Polaroid camera, just so you can hear the slight sound of a leaf shutter. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to, you know, I do shoot a lot of film, so I'm not going to do a click click, but maybe in the future I will do a, actual click click sound test or something. So thank you for commenting. I appreciate your support. I know you were half kidding when you when you said that, but uh, I appreciate uh, you being very honest with me in a playful way. And that leads to my next question about, about uh, it's not even a question again, it's uh, a lot of people talking about film versus digital and you know, yay, you know, believe in film, shoot film, you know, mega, down with megapixels and, and whatever those sort of things. I don't see there's a war between digital and film. Um, film is never going to be where it was before, but there is a resurgence of it, and that's great. I, I do enjoy shooting film, and I have lots of film cameras. I just did a recent uh, YouTube video coming up. It's the challenge between the, the uh, Instax versus the Peel Apart food, uh, Polaroid camera, so with a local photographer, so look forward to that. But uh, you know, I shoot film all the time. I enjoy shooting, uh, you call it regular film, but you know, 35 mil. Uh, right now I have the uh, Pro 400H uh, Fuji film in my uh, uh, Minolta CLE. I shoot lots of film. And so I think both are great, both for different reasons. And that leads for, to another question, which is, well, why, you know, wh where do you post your pictures of your film? Well, I don't post everything that I take pictures of. So even something like my iPhone, people wonder, well, someone, there was another question that someone had asked, uh, how, you know, like how many pictures are worthy of you posting? I try to be as prolific as possible. I do do the random stuff where I go to a grocery store and I'll take pictures of, of labels. But when I'm actually in the zone trying to get great pictures, to me, I try to make every picture that picture that will stand the test of time. And not that I'm looking for fame or anything like that, but you know, in 20, 30 years, even for myself, looking back on my pictures, I want to be proud of everything that I shoot. So even with my iPhone pictures, less than, I would say less than 5%, less than 5 or 10% actually make my Instagram account. So I actually have, uh, some of you know, I have four or five Instagram accounts. I won't tell you all of them, but Big Hat Taco is my main one, but if you look through my, feed a little bit, you can see that I do have little experimental and side projects. So I have five, four or five Instagram accounts. I post separate pictures on my Twitter account and then I post pictures on my YouTube and I use them for cover pictures, for my reviews for other articles like Fuji Love. So I take lots of pictures. So in terms of my film, I post almost none of them on any social media. They're for myself and I love them. And one day I might scan them and show them but to me film is very personal and I keep it for myself so I don't really share them on a social media platform. For myself it's too much work. For me social media, Instagram, Twitter, it's about speed and efficiency for myself. I'm not sliding anyone that 
scans their pictures and posts them. I think that's, that's fantastic. That's great for them. But for me, I keep my film photography separate. So uh, that's why uh, I do shoot film, I do shoot digital. I take lots of pictures. I post less than 5% of them. So what you see is a very small, it's the tip of the iceberg of the different things that I do. So I enjoy taking pictures. So that is, how many answers, questions was that? Four, five, two, two. My producer's saying two. I think there was like sub questions. It was like part, question two, part A, B, C. So anyways, we'll just, Keep on going here. Um, X100T versus XT10 for street photography. Uh, I was gonna do a final third video to finish off the series, but you know what? I'm gonna just do a very quick uh, review, finish on this, which is um, for street, X100T for sure. Leaf shutter, flash, sync, fast, super simple lens, the 27 mil pancake, which works out to be about a 40 mil equivalent. Um, for the street, the focal length is fine, but there was no, okay, here's the lens here. There was, there's no aperture ring, uh, autofocus, I mean, manual focus is a little bit awkward. Uh, I think for the street, this is superior. Uh, I had the 50 mil adapter on the street to try to do a 50 mil. That was much easier to manually focus. I wrote an article for Fuji Love about that. So I tried it with that and I got really great 50 mil equivalent pictures with the X100T, but again, manually focusing. And with the X-T10, yes, of course, you can use it for street photography. Uh, it has the articulating screen. It has a lot of really good features that the X100T does not have, but slow flash sync and um, uh, just it's not as quiet, you know? Even though it is quiet compared to like a Leica, it's still not as quiet or stealthy as the X100T, so. But what I did know is that if this is your primary camera, I mean, right now I have my favorite Fujifilm wide-angle lens, which is the XF 14mm f2.8. What an awesome lens. And you know, you just cannot, there is no, the WCL, uh, accessory lens for the X100 it only goes to 28. It needs a 21 mil equivalent, or this is a 14 mil. So um, until that comes out for the X100T, you need a X series ILC body. And with the XT10 and the 14 mil lens uh, for shooting ultra wide, at least I would consider it ultra wide coming from the film era. Uh, this is a great combo. So with the with the 27 mil pancake, for me, meh, it, it's it's not bad when comparing with this. But once I have this on here, some days I just leave with this, and I really enjoy shooting with this. You just don't have that flexibility with a camera like this. But so again, for street photography, shebang X100T. For everything else, bang shebang the XT10. All right, so that's my final conclusion with these two cameras. GR2, GR2. This is a, it's sort of made me, there isn't a huge difference between the GR2 and the GR, except in firmware. And I, as I'm digging through the menus, I'm realizing the, the power of the GR again. So, uh, you know what, I think I forgot to bring my GR limited edition, which is, a good sign because I always have it with me, but now that I have the GR2 to review, there was no point in carrying the, the other GR limited edition. Um, would I upgrade if I have the GR? No, of course not, don't upgrade. Um, what do I think about the GR2? The GR2 firmware, wh what's running inside needs to be, the older GR should have the update. And I think Rico would do it in a couple of months once the sales of the GR2 justifies them backwards compatible upgrading the firmware on the original GR. But uh, why am I bringing this out? Because there seems to be a lot of questions still about between these two cameras as well as um, do I shoot this with a, the OVF and do I wish it had an EVF? Do I wish the GR had an EVF? Um, looking at the back, I just don't see a space for it. And for them to make it bigger to put it in, I would say no if they have to compromise the size and the shape of this. But I do think that if Rico was a little bit more, um, if they thought about it more, they could fit in an optical viewfinder built into the body. And it could be a cheesy one, like the original GR1 film cameras. Uh, you can't use the hood with it, obviously, because you can see there is almost no space to put, uh, you know, I'm just looking at this. I guess it'll have to be in the top left corner. But 
I've basically learned, look, I'm gonna shoot this camera like this, all right? I'm gonna shoot with it like a tourist and also shoot with it blind. And I know the 28 mil equivalent angle of view, so I, I often don't even need to look at the camera when I shoot with it. I like the compact size. Uh, this camera, the beauty and the joy of it is using the hybrid, the optical electronic viewfinder. So I shoot with one or the other. I love both of these cameras. People know I've tried to choose between these two two years ago when I was trying to pick which one will be my, my powerful EDC, and I picked the GR because of its compact size, but I've always said the X100T is the better camera. Now, another question people ask is which lens is sharper? Wide open, the GR is sharper. The f2.8 that Ricoh decided to stay with is a modest aperture. Now, could they have made this an f2? Yes, or even a 2.4, but it would have been soft on the edges at f2.8. But at f2.8, right across the sharpness, it's beautiful, light fall off is to a minimum, uh, the vignetting. This one, the X100T and the other lenses, the same lens on the S as well as the original X100. Uh, f2, center is sharp, edge is, pretty sharp but not super sharp you need to stop down it's sharpest at f4 on this lens okay uh, this one here 28 i don't hesitate to shoot wide open i don't fear that it's not as sharp but you know there's more to a lens and a camera system than just sharpness and one of the things is even though this lens is sharper the images are clearer on this because of the the x trans uh sensor as well as the the EXR processor. If you look at it at equal, especially as you get to higher ISO uh, 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 speeds like 800, 1600, the images on the X100T will look better. Less noise, just the color rendition is better, less fiddling. I, I stick to the JPEGs and the Fuji because it just comes out of camera so great. The GR I typically will shoot in uh, DNG and then I'll have to play with it and then when I look at the same picture you know what the Fujifilm images still look better the the overall the look of the images so um, you have to work harder to make the images look better on the GR which I don't mind but if someone just wants out of camera better looking JPEGs uh, the Fuji is the way to go so uh, my final conclusion you see it's still confusing right like which is better well it really depends what you mean by better uh, they're both great cameras I wouldn't hesitate a buddy of mine just bought the older GR and he loves it because he had a Canon SLR it's like I haven't used it in two years. And so I said, mm, if you want an SLR quality APS-C size sensor camera in the smallest package, this is the way to go. Street photographer, hipster, cool dude, all in one camera, don't want to change lenses, want a optical viewfinder or even an EVF, this is the way to go, but you're gonna pay for it. It's almost twice the price of this camera here. So that's my conclusion on these two. I might have to do like a third conclusion because this topic keeps on coming up between these two cameras. So both great cameras, I would give a double thumbs up to both of them. Now I'm gonna look at my list here uh, of the questions. I think I may have answered half of them already, so we answered that. Workshops and photo walks, do I do them? Yes, I do, but I've kind of been doing a lot of private workshops. So if you're interested and you're in town, just direct message me or email me or contact me however you can. There, I do have my email address sort of buried in different areas because I don't want spam, but it's not that hard to find my email address to, to get, uh, d message me directly and I could talk to you. Or if you have a group of people that come together and want to do a workshop, or if you have an idea, uh, just let me know and we'll see if we can do some kind of a collaboration. But I will try to have regular workshops coming up uh, next year. Uh, this uh, year is a bit busy for me because I have a couple of projects upcoming. So for now, uh, nothing official, nothing too big. I may be a guest in different upcoming workshops and if those things come up and they work out, I'll let you know. But uh, right now, nothing that is open to the public at this time. Um, a couple of questions came up in my video about what's in my bag. Uh, a couple of commenters uh, and as well in other uh, social media uh, platforms say like why do you carry so much in your camera bag and it's true I, I talk about keeping things simple and it seemed like I went cray cray with my camera bag I had way too many cameras well um, I mentioned it before in my Hong Kong what's in my bag uh, video which is 
I'm a camera reviewer, unfortunately. So as much as I would love to just carry, you know, one film camera and one street camera. So if I have to choose, it'll be my Minolta CLE with a 40 mil lens and it'll be a Ricoh GR or some kind of a smaller point and shoot digital and my smartphone and that's it. But, you know, I, I review for Ricoh, I re review for Fujifilm, I review for Leica on a regular basis and then there's the odd cameras I'll review from different brands and so often I'm reviewing you know four or five different cameras and then different straps or accessories so unfortunately I need to carry many of them with me and I don't want to make multiple trips home to grab stuff so depending on how the opportunity opens up I'll decide on the spot I think I'm going to test this so that's why I carry so much but I don't recommend people to hoard and have that much gear acquisition syndrome uh, effect when it comes to your camera bags. Keep it simple and keep it light. As a reviewer, unfortunately, I don't have that freedom. But when I'm out with my wife, I actually do, um, where is it here? This bag here. So when I'm out with my wife, so today was my day off, except for now I'm shooting this video. But when I'm with my wife, this is my camera bag. And what did I bring today? I just brought two cameras. Actually, I think you even have one of them in here. I brought um, the GR and I brought the the uh, Fujifilm X30. I'm actually testing its video capabilities. Everyone says how horrible it is, so I'm gonna test it for myself and try to see, try to make it not horrible, because I think this actually can be a pretty decent uh, video camera. So uh, so this is it, this is, this is very simple. And in my video when I went to Whistler, I think I did showcase this camera bag. So this is, when I'm out with my wife or with my friends, this is what I carry. It's very simple. So this is, um, so I do promote keeping it simple and small and not caring too much. Uh, John Lehman, man alive. I, he has so many fans, he should just have his own channel. People have been asking, oh, you should do this, you should do that with him. Uh, just so you know, we have a couple of projects on the go and so we will be posting stuff eventually. I'm not gonna tell you when, so don't ask, but uh, yes, John will be back, okay? So that's, I'll leave it at that. There's no point spoiling the excitement. Uh, there's too many exciting things happening already. So uh, let's just keep it at that. John will be back as well as some of my other guests. So just stay tuned. Uh, why don't I try micro, micro four thirds? Do you hate micro four thirds? Why don't you try micro, micro four thirds? I seem to get that a lot. Uh, I mentioned it a few times in different videos and I'll mention it again. I have no problems with Micro Four Thirds. In fact, when people ask me in general, what camera should I get? Uh, if someone says that I want an interchangeable lens system, a camera system, 99% of the time I say, go Micro Four Thirds. Because if you're asking me, then you don't have a preference. If you're a pro, you already know, I like APS-C, I like full frame, I like medium format. You know, you already have a, a workflow. And even then I do get some pros ask me because I do test a variety of cameras and I come from film and then I, I gone into digital so but most people when they ask I say go micro four thirds it is the best platform bang for your buck two major brands investing into a shared platform it reminds me of the K mount that Pentax made in the 60s and 70s and other brands like Rico and Miranda they all bought into the K mount so there was like eight different camera companies making K mount bodies and came out lenses and then all the different third-party lens companies like Sigma and Tamron and Tokina, they all started making. So there's just so many came out. So that works. Everyone else had proprietary mounts and I think that actually defeats a lot of purpose. So Micro Four Thirds, thumbs up. I think it's great. Will I review them? Uh, eventually, yeah. So this is kind of a B part to the question. So why don't I review Micro Four Thirds? Because I'm a one-man show and I have other brands, other things that I'm working on, and I also have to make a living and I do other things. Um, so uh, as a one-man show, it's very hard to, I, I, I don't, for instance, I don't shoot for b &H, so I can't just ask for any brand. I try to build a relationship with the brand. I contact them, I introduce myself, I showcase what I've done, and then I tell them as a media, I would love to build some relationship with you. And those things take time and, and there's trust involved as well. And so when I build up a good relationship, I do get things like, pre-production cameras and you know embargoed cameras and even opinions. They'll say, hey, we're working on this new camera. You can't say anything, but what do you think about this feature? And I'll tell them, hey, you know, I think this. So that's a beautiful position for me to be in. And when I take on an extra brand, so for instance, let's just say I say, I want to review Olympus. Well, that just 
adds more reviews I have to produce and in another format that I'm not used to and then opens up a whole new area of different lenses and if I'm reviewing an Olympus micro thirds, thirds body people say hey you should compare it with the the other brand the Panasonic equivalent so now I got to start reviewing Panasonic so it's a lot of you know it's just a lot it's a bit overwhelming for me so for now I'm very comfortable with the three main brands but I will incorporate a micro four thirds review coming up eventually at some time but not right now. So, but thank you for asking. Uh, if you shoot micro four thirds, you should be happy. It's a very great system. Stick to it. There's no need to upgrade uh, to a uh, APS-C or full frame unless you're a commercial photographer. Next question, what do I do for a living? I, I do this for a living. I, I, I review cameras. I take pictures. I do workshops. I do some commercial work. I do other little things here and there. Um, this is what I do. This is, uh, you know, I consider myself a photographer and a camera reviewer, uh, and that's that's what I do. I take pictures. So uh, there you go. That's the answer to that. Um, my height. People seem to want to know what my height is. I'm five foot five. Uh, I don't know what that works out in centimeters, but that's my height. So some of my friends, or many of my friends, are just tall. They're, you know, and I guess height is relative, because you know, I, I've had a friend who's six five that called someone six one short. He said, oh, you know, Peter, he's short, he's 6'1". I'm like, he's not short to me, he's tall to me, but if you're 6'5", 6'1 is short. So to me, almost everyone is tall. There are a lot of my friends here. So I'm 5'5". Five five. Again, I don't know what difference that makes, but if you're curious, you know, that's that. So uh, that's my Q&A slash mini review, whatever, whatever. If you noticed, uh, I'm wearing a, a Sailor Strap t-shirt. Uh, the captain of Sailor Strap sent me a few shirts for a future project. I'm keeping it clean by keeping a undershirt on, but there's a future project coming up. But uh, I wore my favorite shirt that he sent me, the sardine can uh, camera t-shirt. So thank you, captain, for sending this to me. And as well, you may have noticed uh, the uh, um, child of laborer leather straps here that uh, he also sent me to review. So I'm looking forward to reviewing these cameras, but so far the straps uh, feel, smell fantastic. So that's coming up. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully next month I'll have another whole mess of good and weird and crazy questions. So until then, we'll talk to you soon. I have too many cameras to choose from. What should I use? I will use the new GR, GR2. So. Thanks for watching and happy shooting. Click, click.